there's a concept of source, where are the nutrients coming from, pathway, where do they travel, and then what's the impact? Where do these nutrients eventually end up? So here's an agricultural landscape. The two blue arrows in the middle are indicating the leach pathway. So it's a vertical pathway through the ground surface. So the source I'm on about here is nitrogen. The pathway is a vertical pathway, is the leaching pathway where nutrients are lost through the soil and head towards groundwater. That groundwater, as you can see here by the arrows, eventually ends up in surface water, and that surface water heads off towards the estuary. So we need two things. We need nitrate and water. Where does the nitrate come from? If we take two examples, we take normal can. This is made up of half ammonium and half nitrate. Nitrate is the form of nitrogen that can be readily leached through the soil, whereas ammonium sits there and is more stable. The plant, of course, can use both of these forms of nitrogen. Now look at protected urea. Protected urea converts to the ammonium form of nitrogen when applied to soil, and therefore the nitrogen is now in a safer form and less likely to be leached to the environment. Vulnerable times for nitrogen leaching are when you get high rainfall, where you get combined that with a free draining or moderately drained um, soil type. But of course, when the nitrogen isn't being used by the plant towards the end of the year and the start of the year in particular, you get high rainfall, the nitrate is sitting there, it washes through the soil and you get nitrate leaching. So soils and weather are important and the source of nitrogen so we need to better tailor measures to our nitrate vulnerable and nitrate surplus areas. How long will it take for that nitrate to travel from the soil through this leach pathway to groundwater and to surface water? In freely drained um, areas, it can take months to years, but as we move towards that moderate drainage, it can take up to decades.